So this is Nimbatus. Nim Nimbatus? Nim the Space Drone Constructor. And basically it is an entry into what has started to become a fairly uh, popular sort of uh, genre. I'm not sure if you can call it a genre or what, but the idea of constructor games, usually space construction games and things like that, where you have to build your own ships or craft or, or what have you. And uh, those kinds of things is, have been around for a long time, but they've really started to actually come into their own with the indie scene on Steam. And uh, we've seen lots of pretty interesting different interpretations of it, and I hope we continue to see more because it's really, really fun, generally speaking, to actually, well, it's satisfying, you know, to make your own creations for whatever the mission calls for. And that's exactly what we have here, only in this case, it's focused on, as the name might suggest, drones. And uh, the process of automation and logic, uh, effectively. And um, everything that comes with trying to run a drone construction kind of uh, process in space. And right now, it's uh, pretty early in early access. It is very early access, but it still has enough to play around with and have some fun. Uh, despite the fact that it's only been in early access for like a month or a little bit more. So it's, you know, early days and there's a lot to do, but it's still got some substance to it. And the general goal is to go throughout a galaxy consisting of various planets, each with increasing difficulties and different variants of uh, physics and things like that that make you have to sort of think out of the box sometimes as to what you want to do, and complete a mission on each planet to get more progress towards the next. You have everything right now from uh, transmitter destroying missions where you have to find the sort of small encampment of enemy units on a planet and destroy it to uh, destroying indigenous life like a, a very bad person like snake eggs of this enormous snake that usually kills the crap out of you and uh, hives of insects and even larger missions where you have to do things like destroy entire sort of research bases on a planet that are shielded and much more well protected with lots of various kinds of turrets and things like that so basically the game is split into uh, gathering combat and building you could say right now at least that's what's currently in the game and this is the actual building screen here it is very flexible with what you can do and it involves a kind of specific mechanic that is sort of interesting that makes you have to build things maybe a bit differently than you would traditionally in other similar things you know think of course games like the Captain Forever games or reassembly games like that this is actually a bit more like besiege I would say if you were actually to sort of lay the mechanics out and see what it's closest to of course besiege doesn't take place in space but it's probably the most similar concept in terms of mechanics and uh, every piece has to be anchored to a specific point. And you actually choose what to anchor the piece to. And the more anchors one specific uh, object has to other pieces, the less stable it is. And it can start to vibrate and move around in ways you might not want it to. So you have to be careful about your attachment points and where you actually place objects. This means you can actually place objects just floating out. Whereas in a lot of other games, it would be floating in the middle of nowhere. And uh, thus you couldn't actually do that. You'd have to have something to connect it. In this game, it actually is a physical, as you can see, that sort of gray bridge connection, which means you can, in fact, build outwards in a not as um, restricted way, as long as you have the anchor points to use uh, to make a stable creation. And uh, this is pretty cool because each planet will have different forces of air resistance and gravity to make the way your craft moves a bit different, depending on where you are, and uh, make you sort of create specifically... Uh, constructed drones for specific areas because a very large slow one might be fine for a lot of planets but if a planet is really uh, heavy has a, a lot of air resistance things like that it's it might move too slow or not move at all not suddenly lose the force basically to push itself along because its mass has been increased so much and I like what this makes you think and you can even uh, create new weapons there's quite a tech tree here with three different resources to actually mine on the planet and spend on new upgrades for your equipment. And the equipment can usually have three upgrades in it and is sort of like a, a modular system of what kind of emitter it is and what kind of damage it does. So you have like flamethrowers that are basically like particle emitters and you can change the damage type for anything from like kinetic to even freezing. So you can have like, uh, say, a, a short cryo laser or a long kinetic laser that do various things and you can upgrade the use the upgrade slots to uh, specialize that particular weapon to a, a specific task so for instance you might have one laser that is split into three beams that are long and are very good at 
digging. Therefore, you've made basically what's like a trident shaped like digging laser for digging really, really quickly downwards or something like that. And you can do this to pretty much every sort of weapon and uh, come up with something specific. It encourages you to use them along with the parts in your drone for a specialized task. Basically, the, the most fun I think you can have in this game is not going into the drone construction thinking of just like the ultimate drone, something that can do everything. It's much more fun, at least in my opinion, to go into it trying to make a specialized drone, something for a specific task, something that is not good at everything, but is very good at a certain thing, and uh, actually kind of limit yourself, I suppose, in that regard to make something for that exclusively. So you make a really, really good digging drone that is very, very good at mining, but in combat it would probably suck. Things like that. It's uh, interesting to do, and you even have planets like this that are uh, environmental factors, like heat and cold, and you can even put heaters and coolers on your drone in order to actually counteract these effects, and you can even make your various panels heat or cold resistant, which halves their uh, HP, but makes them, of course, very resistant to the specific types of damage. And in instances like this, it's just fun to see what you can make. Just try to make something ridiculous, it'll probably suck and lose, but just to see what you can do is really enjoyable. That's kind of the essence of games like this, I feel. And uh, you can even, probably some of the more interesting parts of the game, you can even uh, automate everything. In fact, it's very easy to make a drone that is completely autonomous and has no input from you needed. Uh, you can even make drones that print other drones via these factory blocks. So uh, it would be cool to make, say, a a drone that has a bunch of its outer armor along the sides connected to these factory blocks. So once the armor is actually damaged enough, you can shed the previous bits of damaged armor and generate a new, fresh uh, sort of side of armor for whichever size you wanted. Basically like a self-repairing ship. You can do things like that. And uh, you can even make entire sort of orbital bombardment platforms I've seen people make that are effectively used uh, specifically for just decimating everything below them. Basically, while the core is safe way up high, the uh, automated drone is below, just like wreaking havoc on the planet's surface. You can do all sorts of things like that, and uh, you can even make enormous, huge, like, serpentine beasts of drones that are very laggy because they take up, like, the entire screen. But you can do that if you want. And even use, uh, there are mechanical and sensor and logic parts that are basically meant for this, so it does have fairly complex logic gating systems in it, so you can use, you know, like your AND and OR and IF and NOT gates and things like that to make uh, logic circuits. So if you're familiar with that concept from other games or even something like, I don't know, Wire Mod and Gary's Mod, something like that from way back when, it works the same way. And uh, you can make actually pretty complicated little logic gated circuits and the like to specify certain behaviors that you might want for an automated drone. Or you can make very simple circuits that might have some downsides because of how simple they are and how few pieces they make, but because they're small, you can fit them on drones very easily that are also small and have them do certain things very well, which again is sort of, I think, the best part of the game is trying to do very specialized craft like that. One of my favorite things that I've built so far was a version of what you're seeing right now, only it has a sort of auto-shielding effect. I used a, a pretty simple circuit to just make it check every five seconds or so if the shield can be put back up and then it will hold the shield up for a while and then check again. Uh, the downside to how simple the circuit is means that there are there's about a second or so of time when the shield is down, but the upside to it is it's small so it doesn't require a large amount of space or parts that could go wrong and be destroyed to actually keep it running. And uh, also that it's just very easy to fit into other projects and make a sort of automatic drone uh, shield system which is cool. And the other favorite thing that I made you'll see a little bit later, which is the idea of taking a drone that can make support drones off of it. So almost like options in Gradius or something like that, just drones that hover around you and uh, fire where you do that you can continuously print more of if they get destroyed or if you just want more. The more complicated a thing that it is attached to the factory blocks, the longer it takes to actually recharge a print of them. So you can't just spam out tons and tons of drones and overpower everything. You have to think about what you're actually creating and make sure that it's uh, going to be worthwhile to actually put onto something and use all that energy for. Like this, for instance, they're very simple drones. These ones are. These don't have any sort of thrusters or following uh, mechanism on them because I just wanted to see what it would be like to have sort of throwaway support drones, like as a sort of shield. 
and it's fun, actually. It's very cool. There are nice little um, visual touches to the game, like the way that the camera actually makes it clear that you're around a spherical planet. It, it follows in the sort of, like, parabola shape, and you can even dig straight down to the core of a planet, and actually the camera will flip around because you have just, you know, effectively dug to China and come out the other side, basically. It does things like that, and uh, some planets even actually have molten cores and things like that, and then that you have to be careful of when digging because they will destroy you if you fly into them, obviously. And uh, different planets have different sort of native dangers. You know, some have large bases, some have tons of insects, some have a giant snake that murders the crap out of you. And uh, there are, of course, cold and hot planets. I'm not sure if cold planets are in yet. I think they are. And, of course, I have to mention the other activity, which is the arenas. There are kind of multiplayer. You don't play live against other people. You play against their creations. Uh, and it's a sumo arena, meaning there's a circle, and you have to try and push the other person out of the circle to win. Uh, but the drones that you make for the arena have to be weaponless and autonomous. You cannot control them yourself. So it's kind of like battle bots or something like that. You have to make these autonomous drones that do their own thing as effectively as possible to try to push the enemy out of the arena while also preventing themselves from being pushed out. I've made one that's been fairly successful, but I've come across some very good designs that I can't quite beat yet. But it encourages you, again, like a lot of the other uh, sort of modes of this game, to build out of the box to think of something specific that you couldn't do otherwise and uh, instead of making a drone that does everything make something really really good at one thing and it's often the most fun to actually rack your brain and try to figure out how to uh, operate a uh, mechanically complex sort of system of drones or even to come up with something that you don't operate at all because it does everything itself and you can even have like autonomous mining drones that know when to go back to base and uh, can be deployed continuously to keep them mining the planet for resources and things like that that you'll use to get new weapon upgrades. It's early days right now, so a lot of these systems are very uh, short in development. There's not a ton to the game yet. There are the, You could see the missions are fairly repetitive because there aren't very many of them yet, and that there's a lot in the drone building system that needs added to, but they're aware of that. Like, things like the ability to select multiple blocks easily, like bandbox them, or uh, sloped or angled blocks, things like that. Those aren't in yet, but the devs know about their existence and are planning on adding them. So as the game gets updated, it just gets more interesting, and it's something that if you do like these sort of construction sort of games, I very highly recommend that you check out, because it's got some unique mechanics to it, and the idea of the fairly complex, logic-gated creations that you can make with it are pretty satisfying and hard to find elsewhere, I think. It is available right now, in uh, the Early Access System on Steam for $20, which is a fair amount, actually, for what is on offer right now, but I think pretty fair, especially with the direction that it's going and how much content there will be soon. So if you want to hold off and uh, wait f and see what's added, I don't blame you, but uh, it is definitely a very enjoyable little thing. And you can even, like I'm doing here, mess with other people's Steam Workshop creations and just see what happens and ruin them horribly. So yeah, that is Nimbatus, the Space Drone Constructor, as it stands right now. It is in Early Access, uh, project to keep an eye on, I feel. Thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.